We're about to lead into our last two chapters in multivariable calculus that use integrals to measure a wide variety of different quantities. So this is a little prep video to just practice antiderivatives since we have done very little of that thus far in the course. And none of these skills are new skills. They're just review from our calculus one and two days. So if we were going to integrate x to the fourth, that's right, we would get x to the fifth over five, or one-fifth x to the fifth, and there'd be a constant. Now, what we're going to learn in these last two chapters is that every single integration we're going to focus on is going to be what you'd call a definite integral. And we will be getting numerical values, um, as we've learned to call them, scalars. Um, we're not going to be worrying about the plus c constant. So for the sake of expediency, I am going to um, forego the adding the plus c constant. But just know, in problems like this, it would be there. In differential equations, you would care about it very much. All right, t is the variable, and we can use the power rule. This is t to the one-third power, and we will get t to the four-thirds power divided by four-thirds or multiplied by three-fourths, and again, a constant. Sine of y, the integral with respect to y, is going to be, that's right, negative cosine of y and a constant. The integral of 1 over r with respect to r is natural log absolute value of r and a constant. What is the integral of simply dz? Well, of course you are all correct. That would be z and then a constant. And for this last problem, the power rule could be used yet again. This would be theta to the negative third power with respect to theta. And this would be theta add one, get negative two divided by negative two and a constant, ultimately getting us to negative one over two theta squared. If you haven't figured out my alternate motive you need to pay attention to which variable we're integrating with respect to. Now, let's move ahead quickly. Remember, you have pause and rewind abilities. Um, if we use u substitution, of which I already have some preparation on my Canvas page as well, if u is 8x, then du is 8 dx, that's the differential du. And we have a dx here, but we don't have an 8. So dx is equal to du divided by 8. This becomes e to the u multiplied by du divided by 8. And constants may be factored out of integrals. And the integral of e to the u is e to the u. Constant would follow. But we started with x. We don't end with u. 1 8 e to the 8 x. My expectations are that you should be able to integrate something like this using pretty much mental math. But for those moments when you do get stuck, showing the u substitution is the emergency parachute, so to speak. What should we use for this one? All right. If u is 9 minus y squared, then du is negative 2y dy. That's the differential. I have a y and I have a dy, but I don't have a negative 2. So what I do have is equal to du divided by negative 2. And once I finish writing my substitution, du over negative 2, I'm going to do one additional rewrite. 
u to the negative half power. And our power rule takes over again. And we get u to the positive 1 half multiplied by 2 over 1 and a constant. This leads us with negative 9 minus y squared to the positive 1 half power. Or, of course, we could write it this way if we'd like. One last little one of u substitution, and then we get closer to the main event. What is u? said the math teacher to the English professor. Well, u is natural log of p. It's automatically a suspect because we don't have a direct integration formula without using um, integration by parts or other interesting techniques. du is 1 over p dp, and we have that exactly. So we are now integrating u du, which is u squared divided by 2 and a constant. And what is u? Natural log of p, so that's quantity squared divided by 2 and a constant. All right, here is the last little step before we cross over to the Calc 3 side of this mess. We're going to integrate with respect to x. We have terms in both x and y. We're going to begin treating these as similar to partial differentiation. Um, it's not called partial integration, but in effect it works out to be that way. We just need to figure out which one is the variable. That means this is the constant. That says constant. It's written very small. Constants could be factored out. Not necessarily the way we're going to carry on as, as we proceed to the chapter, but I want you to visualize how your mind might process it. Remember, the book um, has the original source. I'm sort of paraphrasing to give you an alternative view. And we're going to get y squared multiplied by x to the 7th over 7, and then a constant. If y is the variable, then that means x is the constant. So we have the constant here, and then we would be integrating with respect to y. y cubed over 3 plus c. If r is the variable, then that means cosine of theta is a constant, and the integral of r would be r squared over 2. You're welcome to put this afterwards as long as it's very clear that they're being multiplied. If theta is the variable, that makes r the constant. Integral of cosine of theta is sine of theta, plus c, of course. And finally, our last little piece before we hit the real chapter 14. x is the variable. That makes this a constant. We could think of this as integrating e to the 8x, which we did a moment ago. The integral of that was 1 over 8 times e to the 8x. The integral of this is going to become 1 over y times e to the xy plus a constant. You could write this using substitution. Let's get rid of that guy for a moment here. u equals x times y. du equals y times dx because y is a constant. In this problem, y is the variable, so now we're being integrating something that looks like e to the 4y, its antiderivative is going to be 1 over x times e to the xy. And if you would like to verify these, this one, take the partial with respect to x, and you should end up with this expression again. 
and this one take the partial with respect to y, and this would turn into that expression again. Give it a go on your own time. Catch you later.